Here's the funny part. Funny, not funny, but we were really great marketers, but we never spent a moment of energy of taking our great skills at marketing and applying it to recruiting, which is what it is, yep. except you're taking marketing and looking for willing people that you can develop. Now, if you don't have the skills and the <clears> training <throat> and all these things that you have to learn, then you have to t hope that they are fully trained. But that's a problem because that pool is very, very small. And if you don't know it now, I don't know when you'll know it. But here's right. the thing that Matt is talking about is, as you explained when you were coaching with somebody else, is I was driving along with Ellen one day, Ellen Rohr, who's also should be pretty famous here. Mm -hmm. So we were co-consultants and I was driving and she was sitting in the side, which was usually we'd have these stupid conversations on the way to an airport <laughs> or to a client. And she looked at me and she, and, and she goes, when's the best time to plant an oak tree? And I go, I, I grew up in New York City. I don't even know what an oak tree is. Why don't you just tell me? And she goes, 10 years ago and today, because down the road, you'll be back in the same situation if you don't do yeah. what I'm talking about right now, which mm -hmm. is get always recruiting, always hiring, always orienting, always training, always retaining. That is the first phase of the staffing power program. Mm -hmm. And it's the same in this program as well. And then that allows you, as you get better at those five skills, is to do what I call apprentice to junior tech. So if you have all your big trade manuals, mm -hmm. I'm not going to trust Matt when he comes out of class four months. Maybe he's been with me 60 to 90 days, proving that he's, you know, he can show up every time, clean and sober, or as close to sober as you guys will accept. And, and basically have, well, no. get him that he, <laughs> that he could be in a truck and go make us money and handle some calls and make himself some money and prove some time on his clock and then I'll bring them back and take them from junior tech to senior tech, next stop along the way, where I teach them all the rest of the trade. There's a lot more to that. The next phase, the last one is senior tech to field supervisor. So by the time you have eight to 12 service trucks running, if you think they're all going to go through the service manager and he can give them all the sales operation technical support they need, you are sadly mistaken mm. because it will they will become the choke point. Or if you have an install crew, where you're running three or five crews a day, that install manager is going to become the choke point. So you need field supervisors. But the problem is, Matt, people go, hey, Matt's a good tech. Why don't we just make him a field supervisor? Based on what? What do you yeah. know? What do you know? You know, you're, you're a good tech. That doesn't make you a good manager. I wasn't a good manager. I had to go to school and learn a lot of this stuff and go to a lot of classes. But that's really a problem when you appoint somebody because everyone who didn't get appointed goes, of course, Matt's buddies with the owners. Brown knows an expression we use here. And so of course he gets the job and all of us are bitter about it. Or worse, 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 is you don't think any of these guys are good enough. You go outside the company, bring somebody in who you don't even know anything about and you appoint them to be the field supervisor, mm -hmm. which is crippling to culture. Mm -hmm. if you're trying to build good culture from the bottom up, not mm -hmm. top down. Folks, to be notified of our upcoming videos, please smash that subscribe button, ring the bell, and if you do get value out of this, please share it with someone else. Look forward to speaking to you in an upcoming video.